here is Dennis Martinez, is a director, senior partner of McKinsey and Company, having joined in 1999 as the first consultant recruited into McKinsey Athens office. He splits his time between international and local work. He has supported several leading multinational companies across Europe and has served major financial institutions, broader public sector enterprises, and large family groups in Greece. He is a leading figure in McKinsey's European consumer sector and a global expert on sales and channel management. In Greece, he has been leading McKinsey's external reputation activities since 2005 and in that capacity has published articles in Kathimerini on topics such as public sector reform and economic competitiveness in Greece. He holds an MS and BS in degree uh, in industrial engineering from Stanford University, USA. Mr. Martinez. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Funny. To, yeah, uh, Anatolia College, it's a big honor to be here and many thanks for the invitation. Um, I remember last time I was in uh, Thessaloniki was actually at the end of May where I was uh, speaking at a conference organized by Mr. Ephthimiadis and the Business Advisory Council for South East Europe. And at that conference, uh, it was right uh, before the, before or after, I'm forgetting, right before the second elections. And uh, it was uh, a point where everyone was fed up about uh, different people expressing uh, views uh, about what, uh, what will or should happen. And I was also getting tired after about two years of uh, being in uh, this uh, public speaking circuit together with some of my colleagues. And I said, this is the last time I'm speaking because I'm tired of saying what should be done and nothing happening. Um, I, and actually, I had forgotten about that. So when I said, uh, OK, I'll come, uh, it wasn't that I really thought about it. But now I was reflecting, OK, why am I back and speaking? And I think the reality is that uh, it, it's actually a much better time now. Uh, and we may not be feeling it, but uh, I think now uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. But uh, uh, we're at a point where we can all see it uh, happen. Um, so I'm going to take you through. Um, basically, uh, four sets of, uh, of analysis um, and, and recommendations, which basically show you, first of all, uh, why uh, we got where we were when we got into the crisis, uh, what has happened since the crisis hit and we started reacting, uh, then uh, what is the case for Greece, what is the opportunity we have ahead of us, and then what we can do to go after it. And I'll try to be fast. Um, and I, I, I recognize also discussing with Fannis uh, this morning, what's my role in this panel? said, Stephen is the investigative reporter who will uh, tell about all the interesting things he has uh, uncovered. You are the technocrat. Uh, uh, so don't expect much, especially in comparison to, to Stephen, in terms of, a, of an interesting uh, presentation. So, first of all, let's realize what we have uh, all uh, gone through, uh, and that is really an unprecedented uh, fear, contraction, economic contraction, that really hasn't had its parallel in recent and uh, comparable history. So if you compare what happened in Greece in terms of GDP growth and the, the duration and the depth uh, that this had compared to recent crises in Turkey, Russia, and Argentina, we have gone through something far worse. So that's, I think where we are now, it's actually the good part of the story in the sense that uh, we, I do believe that we are at the point where we're starting to see some light and um, what all of this is, is behind us. And what has uh, got us here? Uh, first and foremost is that uh, compared to other European countries that we want to compare ourselves uh, to, the, the other members of the EU, uh, Greece has grown uh, in the decade preceding the crisis 
uh, because of uh, very high uh, reliance on consumption that we just kept consuming and consuming more and more and beyond our means, uh, and a relative lack of uh, sufficient investment, um, which also led to a, a significant uh, trade by, uh, deficit. Uh, that was good while money was, was still there to finance that, uh, but when that went away, we were hit with a crisis that we have uh, experienced. And um, <coughs> the, our, our debt, uh, we, we have been uh, among the highest uh, in, in terms of level of, of debt as a percent of GDP. Um, and this was a, a combination of, uh, of public debt and, and, again, consumer lending. Not so much uh, mortgages or corporate lending, which has been the source of uh, crisis we have seen in other uh, countries uh, in, in recent years. And um, all of this uh, is uh, the, our low uh, GDP is a result of low GDP per capita. Uh, which, again, is uh, driven by low productivity in Greece. Uh, and this productivity is, uh, uh, is, is not uh, because we don't work enough. Actually, Greeks, if you look at the bottom of the chart, uh, we are putting actually uh, some of the highest working hours compared to any developed uh, nation. I think we all, while we're also admittedly enjoy, enjoy our lives, uh, we can also feel that we are hard workers and whenever we compare ourselves to uh, international peers, uh, we do feel that. Um, however, what we get out of that work is very, uh, is, 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 uh, very limited. And, and therefore, out of every hour that we work, we actually get a lot less uh, in terms of, of value. And all of this points down to a fundamental uh, productivity, uh, competitiveness, and uh, growth uh, problem, uh, which then does not allow us to grow, uh, which we have uh, then uh, attributed to five major factors, which are then uh, can, uh, broken down into uh, a number of uh, more specific observations. So first of all, uh, Greece, in Greece, uh, we discourage, we have been discouraging investment and scale. Uh, so there's a lot of fragmentation in most uh, areas of, uh, of business. Um, there's a very heavy overregulation of uh, markets and professions not allowing free competition uh, and growth. There, there's a very restrictive and, and uh, opaque uh, licensing and uh, uh, regime, as well as uh, very uh, uh, difficult uh, re regulations around the, the use of uh, land. Um, and then also a tax framework that has been uh, extremely complex and often uh, and used uh, primarily to avoid paying taxes or to be a source of corruption than to actually generate the revenue that the country needs. Then the second uh, set of factors uh, that contribute to this is a very uh, or large and even more important inefficient and ineffective public sector. So um, it's one thing that it's large. Other countries have also large public sectors, but it's also that the quality of the output of the public sector is, is quite poor. Um, again, it's, uh, our public sector is broken down into a uh, large number of uh, often overlapping and uh, conflicting agencies uh, that, again, don't have the scale to produce what they should. Uh, there is uh, very poor management of human resources and uh, injection of expertise and management talent in the public sector. And then uh, a lack of accountability. Um, and I'm going uh, through these uh, uh, factors in this list where I'll illustrate a couple of those. And there's a lot of uh, analysis behind each of those that obviously we don't have time to discuss now. Um, then in the labor market, there is a quite rigid and a narrow use of, uh, of human resources, uh, which uh, uh, one of the key things that are happening in Greece is actually we have a very low participation by younger people and females 
in the in the working population, and that is obviously that does not allow to. And these are actually also uh, parts of the population where you can have more flexible arrangements that allow to to be more efficient and, and productive. Um, and then uh, we have had, and this is in the process of changing, a uh, very restrictive uh, legislative framework around collective agreements, ability to hire, fire people, etc. And uh, this disconnect uh, between uh, um, the educational uh, system and the, the job market, which um, many of you uh, have faced or will be facing um, as, as you now um, enter. Then uh, moving on, uh, the legal and judicial system has been uh, again over complicated, very cumbersome, very heavy and actually also not producing uh, in depth uh, in, in terms of speed and in terms of quality what it should. And uh, a widespread informality, uh, a, a big part of the economy is informal, leading to tax evasion, leading to several kinds of distortions that uh, my friend Elena Panariti will actually uh, talk uh, much more about and she's uh, one of the top experts, I would say, in the world on uh, some of that. Just to illustrate a few points, um, the, there has been a myth in the past that uh, Greece is not productive because it doesn't have the right sectors, the sexy sectors, the high tech, the, 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 the ones that other countries have and are actually doing well. Um, our analysis actually has uh, shown that that is not the case that uh, it is actually productivity within the sectors that uh, has mattered a lot more than uh, the mix of sectors that we have in our economy. Um, and I was talking before the fragmentation. Uh, yes, uh, in Greece we are proud of our heritage of uh, many family businesses, um, but that should not come um, at the expense of uh, competitiveness and growth of the economy. There are many examples of family businesses in other countries that have actually at the same time managed to be efficient and competitive and actually get some scale below the levels that our firms have, which are, as you see, uh, about 50% of our firms are below 50 employees, which is a really very low number uh, by international standards. And as I was saying before, um, by measures of the effectiveness of the public sector, we have actually one of the biggest and uh, least effective uh, public sectors. Uh, and again, all of that is con has contributed to where we were uh, entering the crisis. Now, um, again, I'm not sure we are all realizing it uh, because we go through it. Some of the effects haven't uh, come through. But I would say there is a growing recognition also at the levels of, the, of our partners in, in the Europe and uh, people in the financial and business community internationally that Greece has actually come a long way uh, in the last uh, few years. Uh, it has, uh, especially in terms of fiscal consolidation, it has actually uh, been uh, very close to closing its uh, structural uh, primary deficit. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's now uh, about to, uh, to turn a, a surplus, uh, which means uh, it will not theoretically depend anymore on uh, external funding to cover its uh, ongoing needs. However, um, there, there's still an issue in the sense that uh, all of the money that's flown into Greece it's actually uh, very little of that has gone to the uh, to the real economy, as we call it. Uh, a lot of it has been used to to cover the the, the debt haircut, either directly or through uh, the recapitalizations of the banks who have had to suffer um, <coughs> the effects of the debt uh, haircut. Um, so um, we are at a point where, as I said, we um, we actually have closed. Uh, um, uh, our deficit uh, impressively, I would say, and this is starting to be recognized uh, internationally. Um, and, uh, <coughs> and actually, in terms of the official measure of competitiveness, we almost are back where we were before the, uh, the boom years uh, and the, uh, the more greedy uh, years of our economy started. 
uh, in the, when we entered uh, the Euro. Uh, and uh, that is a result of, uh, of course, uh, significant uh, pressure on, on salaries and, uh, and, and costs uh, to produce. Um, now, uh, however, that is uh, a, a half uh, good picture, I would say, because what still needs to take effect and is, is happening uh, right now is actually the structural reforms that will allow uh, for this uh, achievement of the uh, of the cost uh, uh, that <coughs> per, per unit produced uh, to to actually become sustainable. Um, what has also happened is that uh, the fiscal adjustment that we have seen has uh, has come from the cost side of the government uh, accounts, uh, which means that. Uh, it, uh, it obviously has also depleted of important funds uh, the economy. It also shows that uh, the, the, the revenue side, which is primarily the tax uh, collection, A, it has not improved at all its effectiveness, uh, B, it obviously continues to suffer because of the continuously decreasing GDP and therefore a, a much smaller tax base. And uh, as I mentioned before, actually uh, only a small uh, percent of the total bailout funds, we have received about 150 billion of support. Um, that is debt to our creditors that Greece will need to repay over the years. Um, so far out of that, uh, only about uh, 20 have uh, made their way to the, to the real economy financing the, the deficit. The rest has been has gone to service uh, the debt uh, haircut and and uh, debt uh, service uh, interest service. And uh, we we have lost a significant part of uh, the investment which was already insufficient uh, before uh, we uh, got into the crisis. And investment has uh, has almost uh, vanished. Uh, and without that, as we will see later, uh, we will not be able to uh, grow our way back again and uh, um, have a healthy, sustainably strong uh, economy. Um, we have, um, and we're still at a point uh, where the there, there is a, a barrier to attracting investment. Um, there was uh, a very heavy discount on the value of the government, even the new government bonds that were supposed to be safe and secure when they were issued just a few months ago. However, they still ended up trading at uh, almost uh, 10 cents uh, to the dollar, so they had a very significant devaluation. And that in itself was a deterrent, uh, both because it was showing that there was no expectation in the market of Greece uh, actually making it out of the crisis. Um, and also they were providing a very easy way to invest in Greece and, and make a return uh, rather than make uh, hard investments into the real economy. Now, that was uh, um, also perhaps partly um, a, a, a game in the markets uh, in the expectation that the haircut would, uh, an additional haircut would happen and that's what is actually going through as we speak, uh, on, on Friday is the final closing day of the offer to buy back this outstanding uh, private debt by the government at a significantly reduced rate. Uh, once that is out, we will see more clearly uh, whether Greece uh, starts to become uh, an attractive uh, destination for real investment. Um, one thing that is also important to realize is that uh, a lot of the money that's coming from the support is going to recapitalize the banks, and that is for the banks to be uh, solvent and healthy and to be able to continue doing business. Um, however, the banks at the same time have also lost about 80 billion in uh, deposits. So one other thing that ha we have to see, it's not certain how it will play out, is that the, whether the expectation that uh, just the recapitalization of the banks alone will actually uh, be able to uh, funnel money into the real economy and, and get it moving again, or whether we need to also see uh, deposits re returning at a substantial rate uh, to the banks. That has started happening. We need to see it uh, become more uh, sustainable.
And we need uh, basically, as a result uh, of all that, to see this vicious uh, cycle of the government uh, still not reforming the deficit, uh, uh, not uh, being reduced, uh, the, um, then the, 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 the value of the sovereign debt uh, being reduced, that making banks and companies uh, illiquid and insolvent. All of that is a vicious cycle that, again, I, I am at a point where I'm more optimistic than I have been in a long time that it's, it's about to get solved. But of course, the verdict is still out. This is happening as we speak. <coughs> now, um, what uh, from uh, McKinsey, uh, we have worked actually in the last uh, two years in a, a pretty big piece of work that looked at uh, m most of the important sectors of the big Greek economy, the ones, the five biggest ones in terms of size, but also. Uh, a number of sectors that are uh, uh, high promise, we call them the rising stars. Uh, and uh, we looked at them to see uh, what is the potential of those sectors to actually contribute uh, to back to, uh, to, to bring growth back to the economy and to make the case uh, for Greece. What we saw has been uh, very encouraging, um, that we saw that there is uh, uh, about uh, more, more than 50 billion of additional GDP. Think of GD GDP of Greece uh, now is, uh, you know, uh, 160 or, or something like that. I mean, but in, in the past was, let's say, 2, 250. Um, so this would be a very significant increase of, uh, of GDP. Um, and um, and even more important, this is real growth that will create real jobs, about 500,000 jobs, uh, by going after the potential that these uh, sectors of the economy have. And the, the sectors we looked at were tourism, energy, food manufacturing, agriculture, and retail, as well as those uh, rising stars. Um, and we see already that uh, more than half of the growth could come already in the first uh, five years and even more later. Um, just for you to, to give you another sense is that if, if this growth uh, were added to just a nominal rate of growth that is expected uh, by a mature uh, economy, it would actually more than double it. Uh, so it, it is really a sig very significant acceleration of, uh, of the growth rate of Greece if we can actually achieve and, and realize the potential in those uh, sectors. Um, and so a similar story goes uh, for, the, for the jobs. Uh, again, there have been very detailed reports and also on the website and uh, in various places uh, publicly is available our uh, main report that goes into uh, quite a bit of detail of each of the sectoral findings. Just to highlight some of those to, to show that this is real potential and not uh, daydreaming. Um, in the tourism sector, uh, just to get uh, in uh, uh, what we would consider a fair market share for Greece um, in some of the big growth markets like Russia and China. I mean, you may think, especially here in northern Greece, that you see a lot of Russians. We actually don't see as many Russians as we should be seeing in, in Greece. Um, and if we could just get our share of the Russian tourism to 2% as well as to do the same with China, which is also growing very fast, and some other important uh, markets. And uh, let me. Um, then, uh, <coughs> then we could actually uh, have a, a very significant uh, boost in our uh, tourism GDP. Um, in uh, in cruises. Um, again, a, a, a subsector of tourism that you would expect uh, Greece to be leading because of various uh, um, obstacles, structural obstacles uh, around regulations, uh, what, allow, what kinds of embarkations were allowed or not allowed, uh, what, uh, uh, you know, uh, type of, uh, what nationalities of uh, sailors uh, ships could have. Um, we have actually had a very low share. Um, <coughs> 
uh, and uh, what we have now 10 percent uh, when uh, we could actually if we could get uh, embarkations to match uh, the actual cruise visitors who want to come to Greece and are coming to Greece uh, this uh, business could double and there's a lot more in food uh, around what we can do in olive oil in uh, a number of agricultural products so these are areas where we have real competitive advantages we have products that are globally recognized and just by doing what we uh, would bring us to a normal uh, level of uh, success and competitiveness in those areas we can get uh, the potential that that we saw before um, some of the rising stars in uh, in generic uh, drugs uh, we actually have uh, some of the lowest uh, penetration of generic drugs in in Europe or the world um, whilst we have actually some very good companies producing generic drugs uh, locally uh, just to allow generic drugs uh, uh, relax and align our legislation around uh, what drugs are allowed to be used where uh, could actually bring uh, uh, that uh, number uh, quite higher again create a lot of uh, uh, business opportunity for uh, for the pharma sector um, something uh, many of these things have a relevance for Thessaloniki uh, for example, in tourism, uh, we have uh, made the case of how Greece could actually uh, create attractive city break packages for Athens and, and Thessaloniki. Um, in, in the area, there's a number of agricultural products that can actually be brought uh, to much bigger international prominence. Uh, one of the interesting opportunities also in, uh, in ports um, where um, Thessaloniki could actually be used much more as a gateway port uh, into the broader area, into the Balkans, um, to which will create a lot of activity and not just revenue for the port, which is what happens especially in the so-called transshipment uh, business, so uh, sh ships that just uh, uh, load from one to the other to take it somewhere else. Gateway uh, port business means you get uh, goods into uh, unloaded into the the port, and then it uses the local infrastructure to go to wherever it goes. So, it means a lot of business for everything that is part of the business uh, of that uh, infrastructure. Um, and so now, what are we uh, missing there, or what needs to be done? First of all, let's uh, see if we put all, all that together. Um, it does create a new paradigm for Greece. Uh, it's not the Greece of uh, overconsumption and uh, uh, reckless uh, uh, public and private uh, lending. Uh, it's not the Greece of uh, corrupt uh, um, you know, state uh, authorities and, and uh, intertwined uh, interests. Um, it is a Greece that uh, can actually build a much healthier economy, much more sustainable, uh, that will allow it uh, to stay like that and continue to grow in an increasingly tough international environment. Uh, it will bring our GDP per capita up, it, 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 meaning our productivity will increase. Um, our, uh, our consumption will actually become less as a percent of, of GDP, much more in line with uh, where comparable markets uh, are. Our trade uh, deficit uh, will, will almost uh, close. Um, our investments will increase uh, significantly. Our tax gap will uh, reduce, so the tax gap is the amount of taxes that should be paid but are not getting paid and collected. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the labor mobility will increase substantially. Um, these again are not uh, numbers that come out of thin air because we like them and because they are the right ones. They are actually the result of a bottom-up calculation of what would happen if all the things that have been part uh, of our uh, study uh, are implemented and bring the result that they, they should bring. Um, now, one key part of this is that it needs more investment. To get more investment, it means 
obviously public investment, some of that will start coming back um, and there are various uh, initiatives in place uh, that will, uh, will, will bring some uh, public investment, but more, much more importantly and much more healthily, uh, you need uh, to have uh, a, a private investment uh, coming back, investment though that expects to get a proper return, investment that expects that uh, whoever you know, puts their money behind it uh, will not uh, lose it uh, because of some of the reasons that uh, I described before have led us to, to where we are. Um, and that is the, the big uh, bet for Greece. Uh, and we think we, you know, based on uh, some of the highlights I showed before, there is actually a strong case for Greece. We have, as I, as I said, uh, uh, put in some order our public finances. We are in the process of doing the structural reforms and we should insist and we should see them uh, through. Um, and then, uh, let there's a certain extra measures that we need to take uh, actually in the short term to really get uh, this going. Uh, one that uh, I was actually very happy to see uh, announcement by the Ministry of Development uh, yesterday or the day before um, is uh, was this idea of a national uh, liquidity uh, relief uh, and growth fund for small uh, businesses uh, to, to partly uh, come in and compensate for the funding that the banking sector cannot uh, provide. Um, and the Ministry did make some announcements that are already making not 3 billion yet, but uh, about, uh, I think, 170 million, which will be multiplied and, and start getting some of this going. And I think if this is successful, it will be easy to attract more money into it. It's important to unblock uh, some of the infrastructure projects that have been stalled. And uh, again, that is underway. Um, it's, it's important, uh, and th there we, we are a little, uh, uh, we're not really very advanced yet, is to, to remove some of the administrative and legislative uh, and regulatory barriers. Um, and again, it has to do around the use of land, it has to do around, uh, in labor, as I said, we are, uh, we have covered more of the way. We now just have to see the businesses uh, implementing it. Uh, the judicial system, there's a lot that uh, needs to, of the barriers that exist there need to be removed and uh, uh, th there can be a plan and some, uh, you know, relatively quick fixes to do that. Uh, the fast track framework that has been announced many times has been put in place but has never really worked. Uh, again, there are experiences from abroad and I think the willingness now to fix it. Um, the, the banking recapitalization, again, we think it's going to happen finally, uh, but it's still, there's every day or every week there is a, some surprise around it. It seems it, it will happen. As I said before, it's not certain that this will actually uh, also provide the, the, the liquidity that the economy needs, but it's a necessary step forward uh, to, to get there. I think it will also help, as I said before, to attract back uh, deposits uh, so that uh, the banks can really start uh, lending. Um, th th we have some uh, proposals uh, to um, uh, set up a unit, a pr very uh, strong project management unit to drive reforms under the Prime Minister and uh, also an innovative proposal around the talent management office that will actually bring for temporary periods and rotate uh, in the public sector's managers from the private sector and having some funding that will compensate for uh, some of the loss of, uh, of the salaries that uh, they will have if they go into the public sector. Uh, and finally, uh, very, and very importantly, if nothing else, uh, I mean, not just for the financial result it will bring, but because it will restore a sense of fairness in our society. Um, is uh, again uh, in the tax uh, reform area to bring uh, best practices that other countries have used and have allowed them to actually collect taxes uh, uh, with much more success uh, than Greece has historically and uh, despite all the efforts that have been made to that. So 
It's not an easy set of actions, but it's uh, one that is doable. And again, I, we feel that uh, we have now behind us uh, some of the uh, harder part of the of this uh, the harder phase of this crisis. It needs persistence. It, it's still going to be tough, uh, but. Uh, uh, we do believe that with uh, it, it, it is now time to do it, and I think it's uh, also up to all of us and you know, the broader public to embrace them and, and see them through. Thank you very much.